buildings in process of uh, renovations within ESCO, which is the investment of more than 80 million uh, million euros. Uh, therefore, there is there is a good uh, uh, opportunity for ESCO ESCO market to, to merge to grow uh, in Croatia. Uh, for end, I would just like to give you the general problem or you of the of the problems. Uh, a bit. In in every segment, you have several problems. For instance, with ESCO, you are asking the energy service company to invest their own money to rebuild the public building. They have to take the loan, and when they take the loan, they cannot go to, una to another project because they have already in debt, they have already loan, they have uh, one, one credit on their back. Uh, and uh, if the, the financial institution would recognize that energy performance contract will provide them the profit for the next still 14 or 15 years, maybe this could be used as a guarantee for next ESCO project. That is only only one one problem of ESCO market. And uh, one of the, the, for me, one of the biggest problems uh, where we have introduced energy certification and uh, all other things that had to be done before the energy renovation, uh, there was not accuracy control of the projects of the of the energy certificates and uh, when market has made uh, their like if, if you offer the opportunity or if you offer the, the, the uh, service to provide energy certificate and the market does not does not control the quality of energy certificate you get the low prices and you can have the, the, the projects of, of low quality and these are the problems that we uh, have to take on. Despite all of these problems, I can say that Croatia is, uh, when it's concerning to energy efficiency in buildings, are on the right path to, to, to uh, fulfill all the demands for energy efficiency in buildings and that we are doing good and the, 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 the prognosis are good. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Kovacevic. And um, um, I can I ask from Mr. Uh, Espina to just wait because uh, we have our guest, Mr. Matt Benson, uh, who is the president of the Assembly of European Regions. And I understand you have to leave uh, fairly quickly. So if I, I, I give the floor to Mr. Benson, and then uh, we conclude with Turkey. Yes, thank you. And then I'll ask the question to you after. Okay. Okay. It seems that we are a little uh, yes, you. Thank you very much, and thank you for um, uh, accepting this uh, little change. I, I, I will be at the uh, Committee of Regions uh, and meets with uh, Commissioner Kriet uh, later. So thank you for, for this. Yes, my name is Magnus Bansson. I'm the uh, quite newly elected president of the Assembly of European Regions. I'm also uh, president of my home region, uh, Region Västergötaland of Sweden. Uh, and I, uh, it's a region with 1.7 uh, million inhabitants in, and the biggest city in, in my region is the city of Gothenburg, that perhaps some of you know about. Uh, I am here also to mention uh, about uh, another organization actually, and it's the R20 that asked me also to be, to be um, uh, um, representing them as, uh, as their new uh, president. And that had to do with uh, me being elected uh, president of, of the R uh, AER. AER, as um, some of you know, is... The <laughs> thank you. No? <laughs> That's not, that was not why I mentioned it, but thank you very much. No, the R20 okay. is the... Uh, uh, largest uh, regional organization of Europe, independent organization. And uh, Abruzzo is a, a member and I've been for a long time, so I'm happy with, with the work we have done together. Uh, and and, uh, uh, and uh, AR is focusing on two things. One thing is to influence the, what's 
being de decided on the EU level and also on the uh, European, uh, on the Council of Europe uh, level, that's one thing. Uh, so we are trying to be working very much in, in the pre-draft um, state to try to influence the, the policy to make sure that the voice of regions and the voice of reason <laughs> will be heard in, in that uh, sense. And uh, the other thing is that we are a platform for trying to be a, a good way of finding partners because we don't always need to do um, invent the wheel by ourselves. We can learn from each other and learn best practice. And I think this is a very important way of, of doing uh, things for, for, for the future. So the R20 then, <laughs> I'll also explain a bit what, what is R20. It was uh, established uh, 2011, officially. It had been working a bit before, but 2012, um, 2011, I mean, was the time when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was the governor of California, and he was a bit uh, angry, <laughs> let's call it that, to say, that when the national states were discuss discussing the climate change uh, uh, issues, the regions were not on, uh, around the table. And still, California, for example, is uh, only California is the sixth biggest uh, economy in the world. And they had the strongest uh, uh, regulation for, for um, in favor of the environment, but still they made sure that they, their economy was growing and they think that they, they were one very good showcase. And there are other uh, regions around the world that, that show that you can be uh, protect, protecting the environment, but still also make your, make your economy grow. But they were, in, in US, they were fighting with their, uh, with their uh, federal <coughs> level and they they, all their uh, environmental uh, regulations fr from the state of California was questioned by the, by the federal uh, state and they fight them all the way and won uh, in, in the su uh, su Supreme Court in, in the end. So they have been uh, a very good example. But there are other examples around the world and we wanted to make our voice heard from the regional level. Uh, so that's one thing of what R20 is doing, is also on, on in the COP meetings, for example, uh, we are uh, making our voice heard uh, from a regional point of view, uh, fighting climate change. Uh, the other, other thing that R20 has been uh, doing more and more is to to find a good way of, of uh, financing uh, green projects from regions. Uh, and this is, has been more and more one of our more important uh, tasks. Because uh, there are a lot of good uh, projects around, around the whole world from, from a regional point of view that's not, just have a ha very hard time of getting finance. And on the other hand, we know that there are more and more uh, investors that are uh, interested in uh, taking part in this uh, in this kind of, of investment. So, how do you put these two groups together, and how do you um, and how do you um, make sure that the outcome can be positive also for for for, for, uh, for the climate? So, what we, so what Art Twenty has been doing is to form a um, value chain, let's call it that, to make sure that, first of all, uh, the first thing is to, um, to uh, try to find this project. So the first thing we did was to, to have a 100 project campaign. We thought if we ask for, uh, for the regions, if we can find 100 green uh, projects around the world, then we could put an extra focus on this. And the, could be easier for us to explain how, how we can uh, continue. And uh, the question was sent out just before, the, just before when everyone was going for summer vacations, and uh, the deadline was 
of just when people come back to, to the after the summer vacation, so we thought it could be a problem of getting these uh, projects sent in. But we hope for for uh, 100 projects, and we got 550, even though it was a short time and a, a bad time from from a, a, a working uh, situation. So we know that there are a lot of projects, and we had 550 very good projects from the so AER was sort of the European uh, liaison uh, in this field and, and uh, from, from the AR uh, regions we got uh, 36 very good uh, projects set in. So that's what the first thing, to identify projects. This, this is the first step. The second step is to make sure that we, we um, uh, know that these uh, programs are, are, are uh, yeah, that they are good and that they are uh, possible to do them to, to make sure that they will be um, possible for investors to, to, to um, invest in. And that's the next part in the value chain is to, to scrutinize the projects and, and make sure that you, you, um, you are making them uh, bankable. And that's where you need uh, professional help from, from outside. So this is also something we have found a cooperation with some of the big um, foundations in this area. Uh, for example, the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation has been uh, willing to put, put uh, money into the system to, to, to help us to um, scrutinize the project and, and, and uh, make them bankable. And then of course, the uh, next step is to, to, to um, present them for, for, for the investors and, and uh, so far we have not um, made any, um, we have made uh, a few examples but we are soon very soon getting into uh, 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 the, the state when we are sort of finding this brokerage uh, uh, meeting between, between the the investors and, and the projects and we are very, very hopeful for this and we have had the World Bank behind us and some of the other developing banks so we are using their, um, their it's a, a system called SOURCE how, how you are ex uh, describing the project so th this is very hopeful and we from the uh, AR side we have had the opportunity to uh, invite our uh, members to take part in some of the scholaring of the, how to use this, this, this system. So that's part, that's part and a huge part of what we are doing from the R20 because we think uh, it's important to not le uh, let good examples uh, around the world to be stuck in the drawer or, or, or on the, on the uh, on the shelf because we don't know how to find uh, find uh, funding uh, financing uh, of these projects so that's what we are doing very practical and we're very happy to, to uh, go forward with this and and we have found very good partners in, in this field so hopefully we will uh, be able to to be working more and more with more regions uh, in the future in this field and I'm, I'm sure that we uh, uh, can do uh, something uh, very helpful for 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 the for the climate. I mean, I think this is a, mora a morally important question. I mean, we have responsibility for the next generation, and, and so I, I sometimes take the example of, of my my younger brother. He, he's eight years younger than me, uh, and. When we grew up, in one way, we are two completely different generations because he don't under, he don't remember the Berlin Wall or the Iron Curtain. Uh, for me, it was part of, of, of the history, very close. To, I, I I watched everything that happened when when the Berlin Wall was uh, teared down, uh, and and I think our generation has a very big. Um, responsibility to to show what, what can happen if we, we um, uh, if we don't take the moral responsibility to explain what happened when before when we had it 
divided Europe in, in, in two parts. And I think this is another matter that's of the same uh, moral uh, responsibility, but on a global uh, level. And that's uh, why I think it's important that regions that are work, working very practically with, with the problems of everyday problems of, of, of uh, our citizens, uh, that we need to, to step forward and, and, and uh, make our part in this field. It's because I think in the long run, if we are uh, lucky to be the uh, forerunner in this field, then this is good for our economy. If we are doing this right, we create new jobs, we create new new um, uh, possibilities for, for young people because uh, <coughs> most people won't be working in, in the uh, old time of industry in, in the future. So that this is very important for us. I, I won't take more of your time right now, but I want to thank you for for, for this, and I also want to just give a little gift to uh, the uh, Abruzzo region because they have been our partners for, for a very long time and they have been lead partners when it comes to uh, energy. So I just with this little uh, frame I would like to, to show our appreciation to the Abruzzo region and I would like to give it to, to Mr. President. Uh, Just uh, a few words. But, uh, as I tried to explain a little bit uh, earlier, what was, of course, if we think we could do all the inventions for the future ourselves, if you think we could do uh, all the uh, policy making uh, by ourselves for, for, the, for the upcoming world, okay, try to do it. Uh, by yourself, but, but I don't think that's the way the world is working. I think we need each other, and I think we live in a globalized uh, world, and that's not uh, uh, something that will change. And that's why we need to adopt of being uh, uh, citizens in a global um, uh, sector, so and an open sector, and, and I think that's more and more what we will we will live in. So that's why we need to learn from each other. And I think if I uh, work with the Abruzzo region in one specific uh, area, I don't think that they will uh, sort of uh, be our competitors. I think we will be our partners and that will be, gain, will be a gain for both, both uh, sides. And I think this is how our network for, for European uh, uh, Assembly of European Regions are working. And it's a very much uh, bottom-up uh, approach. So if you have a question about some um, specific, specific area that you know that will, for example, be, be discussed your, uh, on, on the EU level, it's hard for, for me as president of my region to just to um, go to Brussels and think I can talk to the commissioner is responsible for that matter and, and tell, tell them what to do. But together we can do a lot of things. And right right now, uh, a little bit later I will uh, go to a meeting where we are discussing the cohesion policy, so which I think is very important to show that the regions of Europe uh, uh, actually have a very common uh, view on, on this matter and, and this is, could also be very much uh, involved with, with uh, uh, 
uh, green uh, and the climate change uh, question if we do it right. So th that's what we're trying to do. We become stronger. Stronger together. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.